So now we will see three, three approach uh, of the forecasting the exchange rate. So first of all, we can use this type of, you know, the parity rules and find the exchange rate, which is called efficient market approach. So we believe the financial markets are efficient and this reflects all the information which believe that the well IT is pretty symmetric. So if it, this is true, then exchange rate will only change when new information arrive. Therefore, the Ford exchange rate is expected spot rate under the condition of some information. Predicting exchange rate using efficient market approach is affordable, which means it's, it's cheap. It's just a mathematical, you know, calculations, you know, using the data, but it's also uh, good actually. It's, uh, it, 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 it works pretty properly. The next way is called the fundamental approaches. It's very similar to the fundamental analysis in stock and you know, like is in market. So involve econometric models. Econometric model means the economic statistical model that uses variety of explanatory variables. This involves the three staff. You ask them make some models, structural models, good models, so good theory. Then you ask them make the future parameter value. So you, you have to get the parameter values in the future and the use model develop the forecast. The downside is the fundamental model do not work any better than the Ford rate model or the random walk model. Uh, Ford, for the rain model, random walk model is all the efficient market models. And this fundamental model is actually very hard to estimate, and the thing uh, is, it's very sensitive actually. So if you do not find good models, that's bad. If you do not find the good estimated value, that's bad. Um, so um, even though the fundamental approach tells us a lot of stories, still. Um, it may be problematic because it's costly job and then it's very sensitive by model. The final one is technical models. Well, um, it's basically based on the patterns, you know, the technical analysis is looking at the patterns, right? So you're looking at the pattern in the past behavior of exchange rate is, is based upon that, well, people repeat, repeat, okay? So it's at odds with the efficient market hypothesis, basically, right? So what about the performance of the forecasters? Forecasting is very difficult, obviously, for anything. Exchange rate is so, so hard, actually, especially with regard to the future. So forecasters cannot do a better job of forecasting future exchange rate than the forecast implied by forward rate. So it's very hard job to forecast. You you cannot just believe forecast. You have to. You should not actually. The founder of Ford Magazine said you can make more money selling financial advice than following it, which means that well, you know you 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 see the how many forecasters like analysts in the market. They make tons of money. If they are right, then they basically. Uh, receive a lot of funds, but in fact, in fact, that analysts make more money than the people who follow the, the them. And you think about it, if analysts like the forecasters, could the forecasters make a lot more money than they the selling the advice, then they don't advise, right? They basically just uh, invest because it, is it gets better off. So it means that the forecasting involved error, obviously you you should have some good you know forecasters who give better information to you and you have to listen to them, but doesn't really mean that that's everything. That's just forecast. It's very difficult, especially exchange rate market, exchange rate market, foreign exchange rate market, very volatile. There's too many factors that need to be analyzed so you have to gather lots of information, spend much time to trade, to invest. That's why foreign exchange trader is one of the key players in one of the best players in, in the bank, in the company, right? So that's it for chapter six.